This is one of several methods. This one that I'm doing is referred to as the cloak method, C-L-O-A-K-E method. And the way that works is you set up a queen right colony, that is the colony has a queen in it. You make the colony not have the queen by manipulating the boxes and brood. So that equipment again that you need beforehand is sugar syrup, a feeder, internal feeder that will go into your box where you'll put your syrup, white sugar only in use, and a cloak board of some kind. Whether you have one that slides and you can leave it on permanently or take it, take it off each time is entirely up to you. But the purpose for this is to prevent queen pheromones coming from the box with the queen in it into the box where you're going to be placing your cells, where you put your graft. All things that you need, as well as a closed container of some kind uh, that will hold frames because we're juggling frames throughout this exercise. You may and probably will need some replacement frames if you use foundation is good. And the other thing that you need is your prepared cell bar uh, this is one I prepared earlier, and one that you will need to have your cell cups ready because it's advisable to place this in the day that you set up your cell builder. So now to set up your cloak method cell builder. Firstly, a light puff of smoke just to settle bees. When I'm, this one is set up and has a honey super on top of a double brood box, which is my preferred way for initial setup, like early in the season. Later on, I will leave a queen excluder under the second box. Okay, so now we open, obviously, put what we can out of the way. And now a critical factor that you must consider and be aware of is finding your queen. That's, that's very important at this stage because in case you do not know, if there is a queen where you put cells, your cells will not take. You won't get any queens out of that graft. No queen there. Of course, it's always a thing with a double brood box. You have a lot more frames you need to go through to look for a queen. While you're going through looking for the queen, what you want are some food frames, that is with honey and preferably honey and pollen on them or nectar and pollen as a food source, the, they do need a lot of space and a lot of energy to do this job. This is an example of a honey and pollen frame that I do want to use. I'll just give the little shake so you can see. I don't know if the camera can get that, but it's got honey on the outside, fresh nectar in that arc, and pollen throughout here, and that's on both sides. This is a good nutritional source for the bees while they're making cells. So I'm going to leave this one in there because this box is going to become the box where I build my cells. Food for the bees. 
pollen and honey. What I want now is to make room for three, three frames, two of brood, that's two frames of brood. You do not want with that brood any aged larvae that can be turned into queens because they'll start doing that and you may not get as effective a graft. So take out frames that aren't a food source or pollen or the like. If you have in your double brood any brood, uh, you don't want that up here yet. Another thing we need to put in here will be our sugar feeder. You, you want to get that in early so you know the space that you're working with. This works in 10 frame or eight frame. This is an eight frame box. And my feeder is always at the ready. <laughs> and it goes against the wall. Note, I even have written on here for display purposes, white sugar only at a one-to-one -one mix. I know the queen isn't up here. And what, so what I want to put in now are my cell cups, my, my, my cell hanger. These are, these cells are, don't have a graft in them, but you want to put this in for them to clean up. So this is referred to as a hanger, the cell hanger, the horizontal are cell bars and the black ones that you can see are referred to as cell cups. That will sit in a placement where you can put a frame of brood on either side of that, that graph, that what is going to become your graph. Now, for the sake of the photographer, I'm going to smoke the bees a little bit more. Okay, so now, I put my box to the side again. Really bad handling technique in that. I'm still looking for the queen because I did not find her in that box. It is imperative that you locate your queen. You will not have a successful graft if you do not find the queen. So here we go. Let's find the queen. I like to uh, challenge people. Which frame do you think the, bee, the queen is on? This one? Yes, I have a nod from the side. No, no queen, sorry. But that for me is not a bad frame of brood because it's not old, it's not too young that the bees will work on a queen. There's some pollen on it and some ready to hatch bees. The object is to get as many bees as you can, young bees, nurse bees in the top box because they're the ones who are going to look after those cells to maturity. You can use a cloak method set up for your cell builder as either a cell starter or a starter and finisher. Another good frame. She's been working pretty hard. That's good. That's what you want. A note for you as well is that in a cell builder, it's quite good to have an older queen because it's you're kind of working at an emergency stage or a swarming mentality, if I can use that language, for the colony to rapidly work on cell building. So we will be putting a couple of shakes of bees as well as two frames of brood with the bees on them. So there's quite a few bees going to go up. I have found the queen. 
And so I would, I, you can isolate her any way you like as long as she survives the isolation. And for my purpose, I've taken out the couple of frames that I pretty well want to use. So I'm okay to put her back in. All right? But I won't. And the reason I won't is because I'm still going to shake some bees into my top box. Okay, so she's reasonably safe there. What I need to do now is take my frames of brood that I'm going to use in this upper box, in the cell building box. As you can see, that is a frame with brood pretty well right across. I like to have a frame that ha is quite full and near to hatching. Uh, that just makes the, the space more cramped and they want queens so they can fly away and create a new colony. All right, so I'm happy with that frame and I will place it next to my hanger with all of the bees. Okay, so I need another one like that, which I have here. And this has older larvae in it. They won't make queens out of them, but it's a, it's a game about pheromones and numbers. And I will put that in on the other side of my hanger. Something that does can't be done without mentioning, you must be conscious at all times of biosecurity and the health of your bees, especially from a, a pests and diseases viewpoint. And nutrition is key to successful grafting. Now, I still have my queen on this frame, but I want as many bees as I, I dare without taking too many from the bottom box. They still have to survive, but they'll be, have the queen, so everything will still go well. I'll do a couple of shakes. I can put the queen back in because the bees I'm shaking are on frames that I've kept outside. Put this back together. And soon we're coming to the really tricky parts. The tricky part being that at this point in time, you need to turn your bottom box. 180 degrees so that the entrance is facing the opposite way. To this end, when I build boxes, and I would recommend this, I do two entrances, one at the front, one at the rear, which means you don't have to turn boxes. Having said that, I'm now going to turn the box. 180 degrees, and if you don't have the boxes fixed, just pick the whole lot up, turn it around. Ah, did somebody say, why do you do that? I'll tell you why. It's because we are going to set up the cloak board on top with the entrance facing the original direction. So now all of the field bees that are not in that colony, the foragers are out will come back into my cell builder and increase that population further still. So now I can return the cell building part, box above, back on. 
any remaining bees on frames. You can see that one hasn't been anything but drawn out. The bees come off. The frames will, when I get the rest of the bees off, go back into a sealed container. The exercise now is so I shake the bees in, I don't, uh, and then let them settle a little bit and add my sugar syrup. This you will want to have prepared in advance so that you're not pouring it in boiling hot. For instructions on how to make sugar syrup, look at your Tocal College Egg Guide on Queen Bee Rearing. Available now. And I will on my first day fill that pretty well to the top. And then I can gauge what kind of intake there is in the couple of days to come. Okay, so remember it's critical to turn that hive, face the original opening in the opposite direction to what the original was. Your clove board will receive all of those foragers and the foragers who leave the bottom box will go out forage and they're orientated to this position where you will find them. Now, I have another box that has yet to go on. I use a clearer board. For those who aren't familiar, this is either a clearer board or an escape board. It has virtually one way valve. I put it so that the bees can go from the top box into the box below, which again increases that population. I can then remove that box for the rest of the exercise uh, without any bees, which means I have direct access when I want it to the cell building. And that, as we can say, is pretty well that. Now, a couple of more words, always more words, try and stop me. A couple of more words. For my operation, I always did this over a period of three days. That's three days. Set up, as we've just done, is day one. Day two, is when I take out my hanger with the cups on it. I check the sugar syrup, top it up. I go and I do my graft. I then bring the hanger back on day two. It's on, still on day two. My graft is day two, goes in the box. And then day three, I turn the boxes back around to the original configuration. Does that make sense? So what I do then is I, this box will be gone because I've done the clearer. They're all gone. I leave this box in that orientation, but I remove the clove board or take the slide out of the clove board, turning the box to original entrance. Only one entrance back to the original on day three. So one is set up, two is graft, three is returned to original position with a queen excluder. They will finish those cells above a queen right colony once they're started. And you must ensure that you put a queen excluder in between the brood box and the cell builder or you will lose your graft. I do hope that makes some sense for you. Uh, watch it again if you need to. Contact us if you need a bit more help with that but you can raise queens and this cell builder method, that's the cloak method, is easy to use once you get the hang of it. Thank you for your time. All the best with your queen rearing. It's great, everyone can do it.